Okay, class, um, I'm gonna go ahead and try to give you a little bit of a demonstration here in my own kitchen sink on what to do about cleanup. Um, hi. Uh, let's start with the acrylic painters first. They are by far the easiest to deal with as far as cleanup goes. So when you come back to the sink, the, it's very important that you realize by washing acrylics down your sink, you will destroy it. It will absolutely clog the hell out of it and you will never be able to use it again. Okay, maybe not true, but you will you will definitely clog it up. So never wash straight acrylics down the sink as a way to dispose of them, okay? Uh, what you'll wanna do is bring your palette over and if you have not um, figured out a way to you know, save your excess paint, if you don't have sealable containers or whatever, that's fine if you know if if you want to go ahead and be wasteful and not use that. Take your palette knife or a paper towel and scrape all the excess paint that you can possibly get off of it first with a paper towel and just simply throw that garbage in the trash. Okay, acrylic paint is done with. You don't have to worry about it now. And the little minuscule scraps of paint that might be left on here is okay. Just make sure you really water it down and you can wash this just with a sponge or whatever and rinse the rest down the drain. Just make sure there isn't hardly anything on this before you start that process. In fact, you, you could even get away with just wiping it off with paper towels and throwing it in the garbage. If you have old sinks and or, or sinks that you're worried about clogging, I really recommend keeping the paint out of them. All right. Your brushes, which should be just sitting in some kind of glass container full of water. You know, just make sure that you're cleaning them up as much as possible. Rinse out any excess paint just with clear running water. And then you're gonna wanna use some kind of soap. Now there's a couple of things that the art store will have. One of them is like an artist's uh, brush soap that comes in a bar. This is actually not one. It's a nun inside of a bar of soap, weird. And you can just run this brush back and forth over it several times, kind of working into the bristles, rinsing and completing the process until it runs clear. Once it runs clear, you wanna flick out all the excess water and preferably put it somewhere where it can dry either sort of horizontal or you know at a downward position. With acrylic paint, it's not as important. Oil paint though, you definitely don't want to have them sitting up like this to dry straight up and down because the thinner will run into the glue of the bristles in, inside of this, this part and make them loose. So you do want to just make sure they dry upside down if you can. Here's another one. This is another artist soap made by the same company, I think. It's called the Masters Brush Cleaner. Comes in a nice little handy thing. Same idea, you can just run it around in here. This one has the added benefit of having a little bit of a, a, a bristle conditioner in it. You can buy these in small tubs or big tubs. Just see what they have at the art store, it doesn't matter. Just some kind of brush cleaning soap that you can run it around with. Sometimes I just do it in my own hand like this. Use the texture of my palm as a way to kind of move the bristles around, get that soap lathered up, and then rinse, rinse, rinse until it's nice and clean. Okay. Um, and that's about it for acrylic painters. That's all you really need to do to clean up and just be mindful of not washing paint down the sink. For oil painters, you're going to have a few other things to contend with. And again, you don't really want to run this stuff down the sink, but to be honest, it's not nearly as detrimental to your pipes as the acrylic is. However, you still don't want to be throwing everything down the sink. That's not healthy for the environment. It's not good for your plumbing, and there's just better ways of getting rid of it. So first of all, you have to decide what you're going to do with your palette. If you're a total neat freak, you might want to clean this off completely until it's absolutely clear of all paint. Some people are like that, myself included. I typically, you know, once I've collected all the excess little paint piles on here to save, um, I wipe it down really good with paper towels. And those paper towels are safe. They're not soaked with oil. They're just soaked with, um, you know, the, the paint itself and and um, whatever sort of um, 
glaze that you're using, those are safe to go ahead and put straight into the trash. And if you want the additional step, you can use some soap and water, just you know, dish soap, and you can wash this off. That's up to you. Some people like to leave a little thin layer of paint and then they can just scrape it off later. It's, it's kind of how you want to do it. Some people, on the other hand, just let those piles of paint build up and they have sort of beautiful mountain ranges, sculptures of paint all over their, all over their palette. That's cool too. It just depends on how you want to work. And then put that away somewhere to dry. Then you'll have your glaze cup, okay? This is the thing that had a bunch of, uh, you know, glazing medium, that galkid, that stuff that's in here. Again, that stuff is safe to go ahead and wipe up with a paper towel. Just tear off a sheet. I typically you know, scrape it out really good until it's until the majority of it's gone. And there might be a thin layer in there. It doesn't matter to me. I usually let that just dry and that adds to the sort of, you know, layers of protection in the inside of your cup. Go ahead and take that and you can put that directly in the trash. If this is really, really soaked with medium and you're slightly on the fence on whether or not that might be a, a danger, I do have another recommendation. That is to make sure that you lay it out flat like so when you put it on the top of your trash. That way it will go ahead and dry properly without catching on fire rather than being all wadded up in a, a tight little ball that will spontaneously combust. I've never had a problem with that, but if there was ever any time that I did question it, my solution is to have just some sort of random bucket um, that I can keep outside. Uh, fill it up with some water, if you can hear me. Um, maybe fuller than that, whatever, for illustration purposes. And you can throw that garbage right in there. What that does, what that allows, for one, the water is a fire protectant. I mean, essentially now I can go sit this out in my backyard or on my back steps or on my porch. If you're in an apartment and all you have is like a little stoop, maybe this is all you can, um, the space you can afford. This works really good, okay? All the oil leaches out, any of the thinner leaches out into the water and then evaporates, which is basically essentially, you know, just as healthy for the environment as recycling it. So it's, it, it's the, the best that you can possibly manage. Over time, this will slowly evaporate too, the water in the bucket. So remember to keep an eye on it and keep adding water to it as you go. But once the semester's over or once, you know, a project's over and you wanna switch buckets, you can just let this go ahead and evaporate down to nothing. And then you'll have some, you know, really gross looking, scummy, dried up paper towels in there, which you can then throw away without any worries. No worries at all. Sorry if I'm scaring you. I really, the, the fire thing is not as, I don't know. Maybe I'm playing it up too much. I just want you to be aware of it so that you don't have any problems. If you do have any oil soaked rags like this, my suggestion is to lay them out flat on a sidewalk, somewhere outside where they're not around any flammable material. As long as they're not wadded up, it'll go ahead and dry, that medium will dry out of it, and then it becomes safe, either to throw away or even you reuse. <laughs> um, the other option would be to go ahead and throw it in a bucket like this as well, but I don't know. Honestly, I, I think just letting it out on the sidewalk to dry is, is, is probably the best way to deal with any rags. <clears throat> The other option is to try to avoid using rags. That way you don't have to worry about them. Stick to paper towels more and just get used to not having to, to mess with stuff as much. Your brushes, and this is kind of a neat trick. Shoot, I forgot something, I'll be right back. You'll have wanted to have cleaned your brushes as best as humanly possible in your thinner container. So I would do this over the sink, even though you don't really want to pour this into the water, you know, again, bad for the environment, but just in case there's a small drip or something, you don't want to get it on your carpets or floors. A tiny little drop in here is not going to kill anybody. Go ahead and just 
clean, 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 clean until most of the pigment that's possibly in your brush, brush is out. You need the medium and you need the oil so that you're really clean with just thinner. Get it as clean as possible. Okay, I'm gonna close this back up and save it for a different time. Of course, after you've used it, it's gonna start to look murky. It's gonna get quite dirty. There's gonna be a lot of paint particles suspended in there, but I'll show you a trick for that in a minute. Just like the acrylic painters, okay, once this is as clean as you can possibly get with your thinner, in this case, um, Gamsol. Um, you can go ahead and grab the same types of bars of soap, use some water, lather up your bristles, you know, work work into the stumps, try to clean them up and get them as, to run as clear as possible under the water. And then again, shake them out and stick them somewhere to dry, like so. Okay, pretty easy. And that's about it. And if you do those things, you're gonna go ahead and, um, you know, your, your painting stuff will stay clean. Um, I'm not gonna go ahead and take you outside and show you the sidewalk, but you can imagine, you know, what you need to do with these. They, you have to make sure that they're flat when they're oily so that they dry without spontaneous and combusting. And if you have paper towels that you're worried about, <laughs> at least make sure that they're flat in the trash or that they go into a bucket of water. Any of those things um, are, are totally doable and safe ways of taking care of it on your own. I did make a mistake in my last video, or at least I didn't clarify good enough and I wanna make sure that I do. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, do not go get a little cute palette like this. This is a watercolor palette. Yes, it's cute, it's small, it seems functional, May, maybe not as expensive. There's a reason for that. This is not suitable for what you need for oil paint. You need more surface, you need more area, you need to be able to mix your paints, you need a lot of different things. Putting little dabs of oil or acrylic paint in here seems like a good idea, but this really is too small. This is too small of a palette. This is even worse. Those little round plastic ones that they sell you at the art store, don't buy those, it's a waste of money. You might be thinking you're saving money, but essentially, um, yeah, they're, they're not gonna work, so you're throwing money away. And the other thing I think I might have misspoke about is I said that cold wax medium is something that you're gonna need for an assignment. That is true if you're an oil painter. For acrylic painters, you're gonna have the gel medium. I just wanna make that distinction so not everybody goes out and gets cold wax medium. I, it's very, I think it's listed very clearly in your materials list. I just want to make sure, just in case. Finally, there is one trick that I've learned over the years, and you can do this too if you're an oil painter and you can afford two containers. So if you have two containers like this, there's a really neat trick that you can do. You can put your thinner in there, which sometimes is quite expensive. Use it to clean your brushes several times until it starts getting so mucky and dirty that, you know, obviously it's looking like it's doing more harm than good. At which point, seal off that container and let it sit for up to two weeks uh, to a month. During that time, all the particles of goo and gunk and paint and, and whatever is going to settle down here at the bottom. And what you'll have is a nice clear layer of thinner once again at the top. In which case you can take that and recycle it. You can pour it into a new jar and use that as your next cleaning solution. So if you can get two of these that way, see this one needs to be cleaned. See all the, here I'll turn upside down. See all the sediment that's fallen at the bottom. What I would do, since this is sat long enough, I'd pour off the clean solution off of the sediment, and then I'd go ahead and you know, just clean all that gunk out with soap and water really, really thoroughly, and I can get this back to looking like brand new. Switch them out, use a different one, and if you can go back and forth like that, it's a great way to sort of save yourself the money of wasting thinner. Because thinner, especially the expensive kind, the kind that you want to mix with your paint, isn't always 
you know, it's not cheap. Okay, so those are good ways to clean up. Remember, oily rags laid out flat. I'm gonna say it like eight times. Make sure that that's, that's the thing. Acrylic painters, your biggest concern, make sure these things are always wet. You know, in between steps of painting, you have to be able to rinse these out. The nice thing is, is it's pretty easy to get the excess water out with just a simple paper towel. Get the excess water out and start painting again. It's not, not an issue, but always throw these into water when not in use and then use that water as a way to do the preliminary cleaning. Okay, awesome. Thank you very much.